Kind of All right. All right, guys, day two, the 21 convention, 2010, Stockholm, Sweden. First speaker up today is Orlando Owen. The story behind Orlando is that I heard about him from another conference called the Real Man Conference. So I knew about him from that, and then I got to meet him uh, about a week and a half ago in Munich, Germany, for a talk we did together. I saw him speak for 30 minutes, and the minute he got done, I was like, damn, I'm so glad I got this guy speaking at my convention. It's going to be awesome. So with that said, thanks, man. Appreciate it. Kick some cool, ass. Cool, man. Appreciate yeah. it, dude. Yep, yep. Thanks. Give him a round of applause, guys. Yeah. Cool to be here. Thanks. Orlando Owen, as, uh, as um, I was introduced, you probably haven't heard of me so much because I'm kind of like the quiet Illuminati guy behind the scenes, kind of like pulling a lot of strings. You might have heard of some of my books, but you wouldn't know them by my name. I've written some ghostwriting stuff for the community, but I'm not a PUA. I heard that word PUA on the internet about four years ago. And my mentor at the time, Steve P, you might have heard of him. Steve P, and they call him Rasputin Hypnotica. Eric, he hates that word, Rasputin. Anyway, those guys were sort of like my mentors, particularly Steve P. And I called up Steve P and I said, what the hell is a PUA? And Steve said, ah, forget about that shit. He's kind of like a Hells Angels guy. And um, I was like, okay, what is that? He said, it's these guys that are totally coming from lack and neediness, and they go out there and they're running all this kind of game, kind of like Neil. And um, that's, that's like a religion. It's kind of like a cult. I was like, that's really interesting. So I didn't really know what that meant, but I just knew that it wasn't my kind of thing. And I also knew it really wasn't my kind of thing when I went out with a bunch of guys in L.A. about that time, beginning of 2006. And these guys were doing some really weird, crazy stuff. They were like, we have to approach. It's like, we have to get ourselves in state, and we have to really go out there and approach and approach and approach. And they're like, okay, how many approaches have you done? About 3,000. I said, oh, okay, and how many lays? About one or mm, actually none, really. Okay. I said, look, you know, it's like if you've done 3,000 approaches, like I know guys who fall off their bar stools drunk in front of some girls and puked on their, on their, on their shoes, on their high heels. And they probably got them laid a little, lot quicker than you with your 3,000 approaches. <laughs> and it was really interesting because I was out there with these guys and they were going to do this kind of stuff. And so, so what are you going to, we're going to approach that five set there and we're going to like do the, the so-and-so opener and the so-and-so opener and the X, Y, Z. And I'm like, uh, you mean you're going to talk to these girls over there? No, we're approaching a five set. Okay, I, I don't know what that means, but go ahead and do it. I just want to watch you guys do this kind of thing. I'm like, okay, let's see what they're going to do. I was like, so I'm, 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 I'm standing there. I'm thinking something bad is going to happen, something really bad. You know, I just knew it. And there, this was like four years ago. And these guys are walking up to this five set. So translation, five girls are standing there. And they're kind of like snooty L.A. bitches, whatever. And nothing good was going to come of it, right? But these guys are going to walk up there anyway, and the guy says, and they're like, okay, gonna, it, it, it. the girls are like, okay, they, they, I said, they see you coming, be careful. And sure enough, the, the first guy says something, and, and he's kind of like a hit and run, and, blah, 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 and he's like, kind of like, like waiting for effect. I was like, okay. I could read the girl's body language. I could almost see their energy, kind of like, we're going to fuck with these guys. And then the other guy says, blah, 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 blah. And they're like... You could see their, their minds churning, and they were just kind of getting ready for the kill. They were like going like, like the cat in, what is it, like the cat with the Tweety Bird? Bing! The little claws. And then one girl says, oh, you know, I think, you reckon he's going to do the so-and-so approach? No, he's going to do the so-and-so opener. He's going to ask us, like, who lies more, spaghetti or, or dental floss? And the other, the alpha girl of the group kind of like steps forward and says, Listen, pal, mystery method is so last year. This was 2006. This was not just now. 2006. This was already an old hat. This was like tired old stuff from like last year. And these girls knew the openers. They could analyze what they were going to do. DHV, demonstrating higher value. All this like, like geeky talk of like P way, like nerdiness. It's like, why is it that these guys are always doing this kind of stuff like 
It's like programming these old Unix computers from the 80s or 90s. It's like you're trying to hack your way into some girl's pants. <laughs> and I really, I have, like, like what Savage was saying yesterday. I was like, Jason, it was like, God, yes, finally somebody says it as it is. I've just never seen that brilliant breakdown along those two lines of, like, that triangle. It's like, yeah, okay, I could have never really been that analytical about it, and it's, it's just brilliant, because it's a real, real cool system. But it's like neediness versus, you know, having, having inside, having, being already in that state. You can't attract something you don't have. Law of attraction says you can't. It's impossible. And if you're coming from that kind of neediness and geekiness, you're going to attract that on some level or other. So... Let me tell you a little bit about where I'm coming from in this. I call this the law of attraction of attraction. It's, you've all heard about the secret and all that kind of stuff. Now the secret was pretty much a weird marketing positioning billion dollar project where they stripped all the important knowledge out of it. Like Jerry and Esther Hicks, for instance, asking it is given, that's sort of like the basis for it. But they stripped those guys out because they were too greedy to pay. They cut it out and they left the secret completely devoid of real secrets. There's about a dozen secrets that I'm going to give you behind the secret. They cut them all out of the movie, every last one of them. There's nothing in that movie. And but people talk about the law of attraction. They think like, oh yeah, attraction. I'm going to go out there and I'm going to attract something. Well, how are you going to do that? Let me ask you something. Do you guys truly enjoy going out to an environment that's about as noisy as the back of a 747 on takeoff? Do you actually enjoy that? Because I've, I've I got PTSD, like, I think somebody is going to, like, shoot at me when I'm hearing oomphs, oomphs, oomphs. It doesn't give me energy. To me, it's like the most hostile environment on the planet. Clubs and bars. Guys that go there are trying to out-cool each other, out-man each other, out-amog each other. And the girls are trying to outbitch each other. To me, this is like going in the trenches. To me, it's like military warfare. Do you really, is this a, the best place to meet women? I, of all the places I've ever been to, I think it's the worst place. But I've talked to a lot of guys, do you actually enjoy that? No, we hate it. Okay, do you like to approach women and, and open you up? It's almost like putting your balls out there, like, I'm at your mercy. What are you going to do to me? If you do enjoy that, then by all means, I probably have nothing to say to you. But if you like me, or like most guys that I know, if they're really honest about it, they hate that. They hate that process. They hate putting themselves on the line, having to go out there and, and really take an abuse, or opening up, open yourself up for abuse. And most guys say, well, but if I could just meet women, it would be so cool. If, if, if I could literally attract them into my life, how cool would that be? And the PUA is going like, no, that's too easy, dude. That would be, that would be cheating. It has to be hard work. It's like, it's almost like the, the God of the Old Testament, you know, the God of Moses, the God of Abraham, the God of, out of Adam. You know, by the sweat of thy brow shalt thou approach women and, you know, in laboring pains shall you seduce them. Well, the law of attraction says, if it's going to feel like that, if it feels like work, if it feels like a chore, if it feels like a dare, to me, it's like approaching a girl to me is probably, if, I have to, if I'm coming from the mindset of doing a cold approach, I think I'd probably rather jump off a 10, you know, 10 meter diving board than doing that. I just walk over and talk to them. But if I have to approach, and it's the mindset that I'm talking about here, because it's a contextual fear we're talking about. If I have to approach her, then it's like the most scary thing on the planet to me. And my, my philosophy is, I'd much rather kind of like use magic, if you will. Like a, a very, it's not magic in the sense that it's trickery. I'm trying to employ some magic pill here. But I'd like to attract women into my life in a, in a more playful way. You know? I call it play, not game. And to me, it's like, if it isn't fun, what's the point? I mean, if it, doesn't, if it feels like it's, it's, it's scary, it's hard work, I have to force myself to do something then I don't feel comfortable. And then, I'm, then I'm, if I'm outside my comfort zone, then I feel like something scary is happening here. This doesn't feel right. It doesn't feel like that's something I want to do. 
I can go out there and do thousands of approaches. I know a guy who's done 21,000 approaches in two years. Yeah, I'll eat your heart out if you've only done 3,000, pussy. But I'm a total pussy. I've probably done, in my entire life, I've probably done 30, 40 approaches. That's it. So in, in, your, guy, in your guy's book, I'm probably like the, the ultimate like, loser AFC. And that's fine. Have I been with a lot of women? Some say. But to me, it has to be fun. And I want to attract them, literally pull them to me in very natural ways. If it feels artificial, if it feels contrived, if it feels forced, then I'm not in my center, then I'm not feeling good about it. And the outcome will be like that. Who's done like triple digit approaches? Who's done quadru quadruple tri <laughs> digit approaches? Um, how many, honestly, how many lays did you get per 100 approaches? Okay. Oh, yeah? Oh, good, good. Okay. But then it's something you enjoy. It's something, it's, it's kind of like who you are, right? Yeah, I like the thrill of talking to Okay, that's, that's different. I don't know if you notice the difference here. I don't know if this is really true for all of you guys. You, I believe you. But most guys I've seen, yeah, I know I have to do this and I have to hype myself up and I have to spend... 30 minutes under ice cold shower chanting affirmations that I, yes, I can. Uh, I don't think you're doing that. I don't think you need to. You're natural that way. But I, if that's not who you are, then chances are you're probably forcing yourself to do something that's not you. And if you're doing something that's not you, it will feel like that's not you. And girls will feel that. I mean, we've, we've done some stuff at the Real Men Conference a couple of years ago. We did some stuff where we had some girls on stage and we muscle tested them, kind of like this, or tested their stability and the intention of people approaching. The kind of feedback that, can, that girls can give you, they're like machines, they're like radar, intuitive, like supercomputers. And they pick up on stuff like you would not believe. And they can tell you exactly what's going on. The degree of your authenticity, the degree of game, all that kind of stuff. They'll, they'll give you feedback that is so unbelievably merciless that count your blessings that 99% of the time they're not telling you what they're feeling or seeing or picking up on. It's unbelievable. And let me tell you a little bit about my background. You know, it's like I come from women. I've only joined the community, as it were, probably officially about five years ago. I've been around these guys that are now like the superstars around 10 years. The reason I was even like, so like invited into that circle and one of the, the people that actually formed this community from in, in not so obvious ways is that I've been working with women for 25 years. And I'm a little older than you guys. And I've worked with women since mm, I was about 25. And the way it started was I was with a girl, real hot girl, that I ended up marrying. And this girl was real fun, she was real hot, she was like these blonde Swedish, you know, vixens. And tall, you know, like the total cliche of the perfect 10. And I had sex with her, and she had this incredible orgasm after about an hour. And the only problem with that orgasm was that it wasn't real. She had faked an orgasm. I'd never seen that in my life before. And I was like, stop, come here, give me a hug. And she was like, what's going on here? And she said, you know, my boyfriends expect this from me. And you know, it's like, I'm like, no, no, chill. Just be, be quiet. Come here, give me a hug. And she cried and said, look, there's no pressure. You don't need to be doing that. All right, let's just chill and, you know, take all the time you need. I don't care if it ever happens, you know? And it set the stage for me working with women. And I've been working with hundreds and hundreds of women since then, teaching them how to have orgasms, how to have better orgasms, all that kind of stuff. I've trained strippers, porn stars, that kind of girl. I've done tantric seminars. And I've worked with women for so long and so much that I know a little bit about women. I've learned how they work, what really works with them, what they respond to, not just their bodies or not just their squirting orgasms or any of that stuff but how they really relate. What, what's attractive to them? You know, how, they, 
how they really feel. And kind of like harkening back to what Jason said yesterday, Savage, about it's almost like that PUA set, that PUA mindset. You attract, you're trying to extract something by force, by coercion, by trickery, by routines that w women would be willing to give you freely if you could just kind of like step back and relax and really just know what their nature is and kind of like vibrate on the same frequency. And I've probably pissed a bunch of you guys off now by, by kind of like, you know, ragging on uh, pickup and all that kind of stuff. But my philosophy is there has to be a better way, there has to be an easier way. And for many years I've sort of like looked at what's really going on behind the scenes. I've studied magic, I've studied things like that. I've looked at the deep inner game, the ultra deep game of this stuff. Should we take a little break here? Okay, good, okay. All right, so um, the whole thing, my philo philosophy behind this whole thing is there has to be a totally different way to really bring women into your life. Unless you're totally addicted, like most PUAs that I know, are totally addicted to the process. They're totally addicted to their dysfunction. They're totally addicted to, I'm terrible with women, but I will do whatever it takes to get this handled. And the whole, the whole philosophy today of, of motivational speaking, NLP, like almost every single hardcore PUA that I know, pickup artist, is also an NLP practitioner, a master, this or that. It kind of goes hand in hand with a bunch of stuff. Most of the guys I know that are hardcore PUAs are also computer guys. And there's, a sim there's some kind of like common commonality there. A limiting belief, if you will, or a bunch of issues that keep you from, from, from enjoying the process and trying to make it something because there's your peers, there's your peer pressure and unless you're doing all the right stuff and you're, you're part of that culture, that subculture of pickup, you're really not, you're really not anyone. Now, my friend Johnny Soporno, he said a very, a very interesting thing one day and I, even though I knew it and I had already heard it before, I'd never heard it quite like that. He said, these guys aren't interested in women primarily. Men seek the approval of other men first and foremost. And they don't, they don't really seek the approval of anyone else. They don't seek the approval of women. They don't seek women, first of all. They seek the approval of other men. And it's, you have to be a man among men. You have to sort of like impress the other guys. It's kind of like driving the Ferrari or getting the girl and it's kind of like a trophy. You know, you want the hot blonde, not so much because you really want to be with that girl, but because you look good with her in your arm. You're the man, you know, You're like you gained her, you got her. And if, if you walk around with that mindset, always look a little deeper if that's really who you are, if that's really what you want. I mean, I've been with a lot of really, really hot girls in my life. Penthouse models, you know, porn stars, $5,000 a night call girls. But was it really, and some of those were real sweet girls, but most of them were complete borderline syndrome, kind of like messed up. And be very careful what you wish for. A lot of those girls, a lot of these really hot looking, perfect tens, or as some people say, super hot babe, 12.7 or whatever the fuck. <laughs> hey, let me tell you one thing. At 3.40 in the morning, if you're hanging out at those bars and you're gaming, you're wearing the furry hat, you're gaming those supermodels, there's only about 10 supermodels in the world. Yeah, okay. Fat chance you're going to meet them. You will never, ever meet a supermodel at 3.40 in the morning in some bar. Guess where that supermodel is at 3.40 in the morning? She's sleeping, she's been sleeping for five, four or five hours with like cucumbers and avocado masks on her face. She ain't no, she ain't no bar fly, she's not hanging out there. And be real careful, if you meet those girls that are hanging out, those super hot blondes at 12, 12.30, if you've had a couple of drinks, you know, what's the difference between a fox and a dog? <laughs> About four drinks. Yeah, they may look like that, but turn on the lights and you'll realize that that's not, ain't no supermodel. And, and those girls are super attached to their ego, to their, 
if you define your, your, your sense of self-worth and self-esteem by nothing but your looks, well, if one eyelash falls off, there goes your self-esteem. It's like they're only down to 99%, but it feels like they're down to 1% of their self-esteem. They're, kind of, they're falling apart. If you've ever been with those girls, you know that it takes nothing. They break a heel and they're like, oh my God, I'm, my life's over. And, you know, it's like, I need drugs. Be real careful. I don't think you guys really know what those girls are like. I don't think you want to be with those girls. But let's say you are. How do you attract them? I mean, is this what you want? Or is it like something that your buddies say it's cool or like, yeah, I'm the man. I'm amogging, you know, the other guy. I'm like proving my worth by my ability to how much game I have and if I'm doing the routines correctly. If that's what you guys want, yeah, there's plenty of guys teaching that stuff. But I want to show you a different way. I want to show you a way that's not nearly as obvious. And I can see already a little bit of a passive resistance here. Where's this guy going with this? Where's the pickup lines? No, no, we'll pick up lines here. None. You won't see me in clubs because I hate the environment. It's not what I like. You may like it. I like to sit at home. You say, well, you have to go out there and approach. They're not going to knock on your, on your door. No, they do. They do knock on my door. They come out of nowhere because I know how to attract them in a different way. I don't like to do game. I don't like all that stuff. I'm interested in how I feel. And if a girl doesn't make me feel good, or even getting to know her doesn't make me feel good, then I'm not, I'm not feeling good, she's not gonna feel good, no one's gonna feel good in this relationship, in this interaction. And I'm only interested in how things feel. And my intuition is, if you go out there and you're, you wanna be a millionaire, or you wanna have millions, well, I've been there so I know what it feels like. I've had all this shit. I've had a Ferrari 430 Modena Spider didn't make me happy at all. That was a piece of shit car, by the way, anyway. Don't ever get one. <laughs> Real overrated. Get a Corvette, it's a much better car. Faster, quicker, more, better handling, anything. Reliable, it starts up in the morning, even at 20 below. Ferrari won't do that. And that's the same with those girls. Those perfect tens, they won't start up in the morning. Then uh, Pretty Girl 6 is not my idea. I want a girl that's got a little bit of heart and soul because I want to feel good. I want to make her feel good. I want to feel good with her. I don't care if she's a four, five, six, seven. It's not important to me. To me, it's like, like Hypnotica once said, there's only ones and zeros. She's either right for you or she's not. And where I'm going with this is, what's the feeling behind all this stuff? If you want to be a millionaire, do you want to have like, you know, 10,000, green $100 bills of dead presidents on your wall? Is this what you want? You want like, well, our money is green, dollars. But is this what you want? You want the feeling of having that or what you can buy with it? It's always about the feeling. Do you want to be a millionaire because it feels kind of cool? Yeah, I did this. Or is it, I want to have the freedom to travel the world? Well, you can do this for a lot less money than a million dollars. And I know many of billionaires I know billionaires, and they don't have time to travel. They have no freedom. None. They're like talking to their lawyers if they want to take a shit. Do you have time to take a shit? No, I can't do it. Okay, well, I'm, I'm sucking it up then. In my private jet. Like, what's the outcome? Do you want the security? Does it make you feel good? Or is it that sense of accomplishment? Or is it truly coming from joy is the ultimate test for me. And if it isn't truly coming from joy, then wherever you are when you're manifesting something will feel exactly like that. It's one of the secrets behind the secrets. So it's going towards one of those secrets. It's like the ultimate inner game. Most people think attracting something or the law of attraction means, okay, I'm, I'm sitting down, I'm making goals. I'm setting goals for myself. This is what I want. I want to have the Ferrari. I want to have the perfect 10, better two. I want to have, um, you know, whatever. I want to have all these things. Then I'm, then I'm a cool guy and I'll get respect and approval. And I'll respect myself because I've made it. Then I can be happy. You know, the if-then trap. But is it really going to make you happy? Is this really what you want? 
most guys will set those goals and then they do the affirmations and they do the then they go and do the you know the the motivational training and then they then they stand underneath the cold shower for like 20 minutes and and have like these huge ass affirmations. i know guys who do this all the time they have like these 10 affirmations they're they're standing there like shivering water and saying yes i can have that car yes i can have that boat yes i can have that house yes i can have that million dollar a year job and uh, that's one way to torture yourself i would really look behind what's behind that maybe it's masochism maybe it's like oh you know in order to be deserving of something in my life it has to be hard work it has to be tough i have to outman myself i have to like force myself to be that if that's what you're into, that's cool. You know, you can find some dominatrix and she'll tie you up and spank you. That's also the way, a form of self-punishment. I'm sorry? To some it is. You know, it's like if that's truly fun to you, then there's nothing wrong with it. And then that's who you are. And then you should be doing that because it gives you a form of pleasure. But unless it feels like joy, the results will be joyless. And you will always attract into your life what you think you deserve. The law of attraction, most people think you have to set these goals, which is really nothing but a shopping list. I have to go out there and I have to get what I want in life by working down that list. And I set deadlines and I set, you know, frames and I have to define it and I have to sit there for like an hour a day and visualize. And again, what visualization means to most people is forcing images. I have to train my mind. When you study magic, this is the first thing you'll learn, how to hold images in your mind. Real magic that's deserving of the spelling with a CK, like the stuff you've heard, Golden Dawn, Alistair Crowley, all this kind of stuff. Dark magic, light magic. This is mostly forcing images and holding them. And this is what most guys do. Most people that think they're using the law of attraction to attract something in their life, but magic, are you really using that? And they'll get you these results. And I've done this. I remember one time many years ago, a couple of decades ago, I had no money, zilch. And I sat down there and I manifested. For an hour a day, I sat down there and did creative visualization. I read the book, Shakti Gavan, you know, and uh, Gawan, I think it is. And I manifested. I said, I want a house on the water in Miami Beach. I want a sailboat and a powerboat in front of it. And I want to have a girl that wants to have sex for four hours a day. And she has to be a super hot blonde. 15.43 and 7 tenths. I was very specific about my goals, right? And it took me exactly, and I was going to have that within 12 months with about 600 bucks in the bank. I was going to have a million dollar mansion. And the interesting thing is, it did work. I got within one year from having $600 in the bank, I had a house for a half a million dollars. Right with a million dollar view, I had a sailboat, I had a powerboat, and I had a girl that was a Swiss supermodel, not supermodel, she was a hot model, but she wasn't a supermodel, but she wanted to have sex for four hours a day. High quality problem. And it worked, it really worked. And I should have been totally happy, right? Because I saw that ritual magic gets you results. Absolutely, totally certain, if you know how to use it. But as it turned out, that house was so severely haunted. And you may think I'm full of shit, but if you ever seen that movie, Paranormal Phenomena, that shit is fucking real. And that house was it. It was almost like, when I first got in that house, it was almost like the Amityville Horror. It was almost, I heard this voice, not kind of like verbally, but I was like, get out. And I was like, I should have. Trust your instincts. And that house, I mean, I had, stuff flying through the house. It was like poltergeist. Beautiful house. Everybody's like, oh, Jesus Christ, if I could only have a house. It's yours. Half a million dollars. It's yours. That girl was horny all the time, but I should have known that she had this little pinky fingernail that was a little longer than the others. And even though I wasn't quite naive, I didn't quite put two and two together. That if girls take a lot of coke, they're horny all the time. And I was always wondering why, you know, the, the family budget, as it were, was always like a few thousand dollars a month short. I made so much goddamn money, I didn't even notice $5,000 a month missing. It was only when I finally did the books after she was gone that I realized she's been probably putting about five grand a month up her nose. 
And then a hurricane came, Hurricane Andrew, and it sank the sailboat, sank at the dock. And then I still had the powerboat, right? But then another hurricane came a few years later and sank that motherfucker. And there was always something wrong with these boats. And what I didn't realize, everything that I had attracted came from a real weird mindset, from a real dysfunction. Because at the time that I did this, a couple of decades ago, I was really dysfunctional. You know, I was like smoking pot and partying, doing all this kind of shit. I still made shitload of money, but it wasn't like from joy. And everything, it was almost like a reverse Midas touch. It all worked, but it really always felt like crap. It didn't feel good. It should have, and so I was like trying to psych myself up that it did feel good, but it didn't. It was like shallow, it was empty, it was like, it was actually miserable. Like these demons in that house, whatever that was, I'm not saying it was demons, but it was like some weird shit. And those were really a reflection of the demons in my mind, of all the unresolved emotional issues that I was carrying around with me. And for years I did this, and I couldn't figure out why everything that I attracted always felt exactly as miserable as I had when I had attracted those things, because that's what the law of attraction really says. It doesn't mean like, do the affirmations, set the goals, you know, like, yes, I can. It's none of that. The law of attraction says one thing, one thing only. It says that which is onto its, like unto itself is drawn. In other words, if you're vibrating at 104.5 megahertz, like your tuner in your car is actually vibrating at a preset frequency and that's how it attracts that radio station. If your tuner is set to 860 AM, there's no way in hell you're gonna listen to 104.5 FM. It's impossible. It's not in the same frequency. That's all the law of attraction says. It's like the law of gravity. It's a universal law, which means it's always true. You can't escape it. And it always holds in all circumstances. The law of attraction also says you can never attract a girl into your life that's emotionally healthier than you are. If you really think about that, that means if you want better girls, if you want girls of higher vibration, quality, or emotional sanity, you gotta fix your own dysfunction first. There's nothing you can do in the outer plane or in the outside that will attract better things into your life if you don't fix the inner stuff first. And you will always get in your life exactly what you think you're deserving of. If you think you don't deserve better than whatever you have, well, guess what you're going to attract? Now, if you're thinking that, okay, well, the only way I'm going to feel deserving of this is if I do what Mystery says, if I do what RSD says, if I do what Neil Strauss says, and I go and go out there and I approach hardcore, 20 girls a night, 50 girls a night, whatever it is, and it has to be hard work, that numbers game is not working in your favor. The only thing that it's probably going to do for you, and the only reason that it will ever work, is not because your game's are so good, because statistical average for most guys that do that is pretty miserable. As I said, if you fall <laughs> off your bar stool drunk, you probably have a get a ch better get a chance to get laid than 95% of all the guys out there doing routines will have. The reason most people do that and the, most, the reason they, they get the successes is because they feel deserving. I've done everything that Mystery said, or I've done everything that Pickup says, and I've done the hard work. It's almost like the American dream. Go out there. Get a good education, get a good job, and you'll have those 2.3 cars and 2.2 kids and the white picket fence. The all-American dream in the burbs, suburbs. You know, that's how you, kind of, how you manifest that. And if you feel like, oh, I've done 5,000 approaches, at this point, I deserve to get laid because I've done the work. This is why people attract success. Action alone is wonderful, but action alone carries simply not enough power to get results. The inner state and the inner emotion behind it creates that. From a metaphysical point of view, from a point of true magic, as opposed to the path of the mundane, which most people go. If you really take the red pill of truly being a magician, meaning somebody who really knows what he wants, from a deep sense of knowing yourself, 
that's a magician, really. It's not some guy who, who learns like Aleister Crowley shit. That's dark magic. But if you learn real magic, it means like you learn, it's know thyself. You know who you are, you know what you want, you want the things for the right reasons, and then you learn how to manifest them in your life by synthesizing the inner state, the inner state of feeling that you want, and nothing else. If, if you've been like on, so, on, on welfare for 10 years, and you're trying to manifest a million dollars, the reason it doesn't work is not so much because it's just so far out of your financial range, but it's because it's outside your vibrational range. You don't think you deserve that. You don't believe you can do it. It's like trying to, when Neo was trying to leap, who's seen the matrix? That's it, really. It's part of American culture. I don't know anyone, <laughs> I don't know any American under 50 who hasn't seen the matrix. But um, there's, you, you know, you've heard the term the rabbit hole or the, the red pill, the blue pill. There's a scene in there where Neo is jumping from one building to another and it's pure mind power. It can't really be done, but it's only a video program, so he can't do it. But he's looking down and he says, oh, that's too big of a leap, it can't be done, and he falls. This is what happens to people that try to manifest outside their vibrational range, outside what they can believe in, outside of what they really feel deserving of. If you're trying to track the perfect 10, but you're looking in the mirror and saying, I'm about a 6.3741 and 5 tenth, whatever is the differential to the 10 is what you're missing and trying to manifest her from a sense of deserving. If you think I'm a 6.5 but she's a 10, you're 3.5 points short. I hate that stupid scale, but it's useless. It's working against you. It's one of the biggest 10, 10 most limiting beliefs you can ever hold is that, that 10 scale. And by the way, it's not from mystery. It's from a movie from the 70s, The Perfect 10, Bo Derek. That movie's older than you guys are. But no, mystery didn't come up with that 10. That's an old hat. But if you're, if you're trying to vibrate, if you're trying to manifest something that's so far in your vibrational range, like a million dollars if you're in welfare, social security, you don't feel deserving of it. And it's that delta, that differential, that part that you're short of. When you have 10 bucks in the bank and trying to manifest a million dollars, you're 990,900, whatever, 90 short. And that's outside your vibrational range. You don't feel like deserving of it. If you want to be rich, you need to feel rich. That part, the secret got right. That's in there. You need to feel rich. If you want women, you got to, as Zan says, be, show up in the world of women. I'm, I'm paraphrasing. I think he says it more eloquently than I can because he's a smooth motherfucker. But he's, he, oh God, Zan is the most dangerous guy out there when it comes to women. He's unbelievable. If you ever go up with that guy, you'll see some shit you've never seen. But it's like he's, he's, if you know the cat, his secret is partly that he's already in the world of women. He likes women. He loves women. He feels their beauty, their femininity. He's, he's showing up in the world of women. He's vibrating on that range. He, a man who, lo who loves women is loved by women, he says. And that's absolutely true. If you're saying, no, oh, they're kind of bitches, and it's like the digital fortress, and I sort of have to get the right access code and hack my way into her panties, well, that's lack mentality. And if you're vibrating on that, on that range, well, that's what you're going to get. You're going to attract bitches that are going to game you back, and they're going to fuck with you, because they should. Because if, if you're coming truly from that mindset, then they should fuck with you, because it's the best service they can give you by showing you how limited your current mindset is. If you can truly see yourself surrounded by women, loved by women, if you love women, women will feel that instinctively. I'm not saying love every woman, but love their femininity, love their essence, love that which you really want to have in your life. I very much doubt you guys want to just have sex. I don't know if you've ever had sex with girls that are real pretty, but it felt totally shallow and empty. Have you ever had that? I've had it many times. I don't go there anymore. I know better. I see them coming from far away and I run. They won't even show up in my own vibrational range. It's just not compatible. It's not going to show up. 
And if you want to really have great sex, I mean, if you want to just have really, really hardcore porn sex, get a blow up doll. If that's, you can probably do much better with your own hand than those girls can do. Most of them are terrible at sex, unless you train them right, which is what I do. But unless you've trained them, or I've trained them, they're probably not that great at sex, honestly. You think all these hot Swedish girls out there look really great and they're like, make love like a porn star? Jesus, I've had like $5,000 a night girls pay me money to show them how to deep throat, like Steve P. I've done this. They pay me money to show them how to be better at sex. Because I know a lot more about the 99.9% .9 of all girls about sex. I can give them 100 times the pleasure they'll ever give me, unless I've trained them, unless they're really good. I doubt that that's what you guys want. I think you want, I mean, would it be then, if that's what you wanted, you could, you could go to f Germany or somewhere and pay like 50 bucks for 20 minutes with really hot girls. And they'll blow you and they'll suck you and they're actually pretty good at sex. And they're pretty. If that's what you want, but it's not going to give you that fulfillment. Why? Oh, I don't pay for money. I don't need to because I'm a PUA. No, that's not it. You want something else. You want to be the deepest desire of people is to be loved to feel wanted. And really when you're going out there, unless you're like Mr. Badass here, you probably want to be loved. You probably want to have, I'm not talking about mamby pamby romance kind of wishy-washy shit. I'm not talking about sappy, corny crap. I'm talking about a true sense of appreciation. You look at a girl, you look in her eyes, and you see somebody there and she sees you. We do the soul gazing stuff. I learned this from Steve P, but it's, I've already done it before. And I sit there and I'll do a breathing exercise with her for like 10 minutes. And if you ever had that kind of connection on a real deep heart level, and again, I'm not talking about some romantic mammy-pammy shit. I'm talking just presence. The sex afterwards is infinitely better than if you've never done that. It's like a total connection. And I think that's what you want. The trick is not to visualize some arbitrary shopping list that you don't even know if you want those things. I don't think you want the perfect tin. If you've been with enough perfect tins, my intuition is you probably wouldn't want that. If you've ever had it, you probably want it because you haven't had it yet, pre-assuming that you haven't had it. But if you have been with enough of these models and whatever, those girls that you probably wank to on the internet, if you've had enough of those girls, you don't want most of those, trust me. Some of them are cool, but most of them suck ass. And I don't mean that way, I mean like they really suck. No, they blow, I mean they're, they're terrible, you don't want them. The dysfunction junction. I don't think you want that feeling in your life. I sure as heck don't. And I don't want to put myself out there and set myself up for rejection or whatever. I never get rejected. The reason being, that kind of energy can never show up in my life because I'm very, very clear about how I want to feel, what kind of vibrational feelings I want in my life. And if I'm, instead of setting goals, instead of manifesting some arbitrary stuff out of, you know, penthouse or out of the internet or out of some, some intellectual idea of what life should be like, I just go and I look at what I want to feel. The fastest way, and this is where I'm really going with this, the fastest way, the most surefire way to get what you want in life is to feel it. It's to feel it deeply, immediately, and without all the other bullshit. Cut through the bullshit. You know what the Gordian knot is? You ever heard of that? For those who don't, Alexander the Great went to some place and they had a puzzle or a riddle or some kind of thing to figure out. And what it was, it was like this huge as it was like the, the hitch of, a, of, a, um, of, of some kind of like cart to the horses. And it had like these thousands and thousands of cords over the years, leather, ribbons, whatever, had been tied together. Oh, dozens of years, I don't know how long. But it was a massive blob of like a huge ass Rubik's Cube to that nobody could figure out. 
And if he, whoever solved this thing, whoever could unhitch that thing from the, from the horse was like the man, right? And everybody else tried to get into the content of this thing and try to unravel the mystery and like, okay, if I do this and if I do this, this is sort of like pickup. Like, okay, I go from C2 to C3 and then I get LMR to get the XLR to get the FC. Uh, I don't know what you guys are talking about, but that's what most people would do on the path of the mundane. Thinking inside the box, getting mired down in the content of this thing, getting the routine, the goal setting, whatever. Alexander, being the great, great man he was, thought outside the box. He thought in the context of things, in the meta structure, if you will, what do I want? What's the end result? What's my outcome here? The outcome is to separate that thing from that thing. What do you do? He took out his sword and cut right through it. It's called intention. It's a decision. You cut this from that. That's what decida means to cut, the sword. And that's what he did. He, got, he went straight. He was thinking from the end. He said, what's my outcome? This is the outcome. I want to cut this thing, cut right through the bullshit. And the fastest way to manifest something is not to set goals or to manifest it to force imagery. The fastest way is look at what's your outcome. What do you really want? You think you may want the perfect 10 million dollars in the Ferrari. I've had all these things, and not just once, and it wasn't my cup of tea. But what are you really after? It's never a material thing. It's never something you can touch. It's a feeling that you'll have. It's always a feeling. It's an emotion. It's a deeply felt thing. You may think that's not so, but even if you think I'm Mr. Hardcore and I'm cool and I don't need that uh, woo-woo bullshit crap, then that's the feeling you want. You like to vibrate on that frequency of being the tough ass or the cool guy or whatever it is or the, the mobster, the mafia guy, whatever it is that you want, but it's always a feeling. Even if you, if you want to be a serial killer, well, you enjoy that process of spilling blood. So be it, fine. But that's the feeling you're after. And it's why go through all these, the maze of bullshit when you can cut right to the chase and get straight to the feeling you're after. And I think the feeling you're after is a feeling of want, being wanted, being sexually desired, feeling good in the presence of this girl. Because think about it, I mean, nine out of 10 girls that I could have sex with, I will turn down simply because I'm not that much into her. Yes, I would like to fuck her, yeah. But then I'm thinking, okay, if I'm starting to think not from here so much, but from here, then I gotta think what's an hour or two later? This girl's gonna be in my house. What am I gonna do, kick her out? Unless I wanna wake up next to that girl or in her bedroom, I won't go home with her, it's that simple. And nine out of 10 times, I don't, 99 out of 100 times, I can't envision that. Because I know I won't feel good. Because I've been there many, 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 many times. And I don't like that feeling of waking up to someone and says, who the fuck is that? She's pretty, but Jesus Christ, do I really want to spend time with that girl or was I just thinking with my dick? And if I'm not feeling something more with her, why in the heck would I want to spend time with her? To get my rocks off, there's quicker and better ways to do that. I don't think that's what you want. You want a feeling. You want to feel her. You want her to feel you. If you want that, and think about how you can get that quicker. The law of attraction says the quickest way to get there is to already feel that frequency, to already feel that feeling, to already synthesize that. Like my main girlfriend right now, I have freedom, I date many, but I have one what they call a main squeeze. That's the girl I really love. That's the girl I really spend time with. A lot of time, several months a year. And I was always caught in this dichotomy between wanting the one. Whenever I was with the one, I just wanted the many. And then I was like, oh, okay, now I, I go out there and I, I, I doink 20. And then I was like getting empty and I just wanted the one. And I was lying to women, I was like Alfie. If you've ever seen that movie, you probably can't understand it cause unless you've been there, you don't know how, how, how shitty that feels. If you ever look at Jude Law in the end of the movie where he says, look, you know, it's like, I'm, you know. I'm young, I'm single, 
you can see in his eyes, he's, he can't be that good of an actor that he's faking that. He's, he knows what that feels like. I cry when I can't watch that movie because I've lived that life for 20 years. I don't anymore, but I have. And if you think you want a hundred or a thousand girls, I've been with a lot. I don't know how many, but enough to know what that feels like. So my intention was I wanted the many, yes, I wanted the freedom to have sex with other girls, but I wanted the one that I really felt connected to. And for, for years, I couldn't, couldn't solve that dichotomy. I didn't think it was possible. I didn't think it could be done. But I wanted that feeling. And I said, how can I have my cake and eat it too? Without hurting somebody, without lying, without cheating, without doing any of that shit. And instead of doing, trying to do any kind of like trying to figure this, this maze out, I just said, okay, what do I want to feel like? I want to be with one girl and yet have her totally be okay with me being with others. I won't tell her about the, the gory details, but I want that freedom. What would that feel like? And I went straight to that feeling and I stuck with it. And I would do these long walks in the wilderness and I said, what does it feel like? What would it, is it, it's probably not possible, but what would it feel like if there were a girl that loved me, that I loved and yet was okay, that understood that if I'm doinking some other girl out there, it's not gonna mean anything for our relationship. I'm not going to bring back any STDs. I'm not going to bring back any kind of emotional crap. I'm not going to be lying, cheating, or doing anything else. I don't feel like a cheat or, or I'm deceiving her when I'm with the other girls. I feel I'm totally okay and I'm already looking forward to coming back and I'm with her 100% when I'm with her. And I didn't think that was possible, but I just kind of said, this is probably not happening, but what would it feel like? Is it possible? Let's say it was possible. What would it feel like? And I just completely went straight for that feeling and held that feeling for a few minutes every day, just walking, just kind of like, yeah, okay, that's what it would feel like. Meanwhile, I was sitting in a little house that I inherited in Germany in the Black Forest, which is about the most desolate, lonely place on the planet outside Antarctica. And I was like going crazy. But there's no girls up there. But I had to do the work. I had to create product. I had to write seminars, do workshops, one a week, one every two weeks. So I had no time to go out and play. And it's like a, mi a million miles away from there is, is the nearest girl. And on some place like Facebook or something like that, all of a sudden, when I was like completely in that state, yes, I can feel that girl. I know she's out there. I got this little, little like friend request from some girl. I was like, I didn't even answer for like three weeks. I didn't do anything on the outside. I had no game. I didn't do routines. I didn't approach. But that girl showed up out of nowhere. She just literally knocked on my desktop. She's like, knock, knock. Who's there? She was there. And I didn't do anything on the outer plane in terms of take action, affirmations. It has to happen by then. <coughs> I didn't do any of that stuff. All I did was focus on what I really want. And I'll tell you one thing. At this time in my life, for the first time ever, I've had many long-term relationships. I had hundreds of short-term relationships, even a few one-night stands. But for the first time ever, I found a girl that gives me the feeling I'm after. And the only reason that, I, that she's in my life is that I manifested the feeling that I was actually got rid of so many emotional issues through all the exercises I do, all the other stuff that I was finally feeling deserving of somebody. And she said, if we would have met a week before, it wouldn't have worked. And it's true. It was just like magic, two things coming together out of nowhere. That's where I want to get you guys to go to. I think that's what you're really, really after. Unless you're so attached to, oh, that's, e that's too easy. That can't work. I didn't work for it. Unless I get out of my comfort zone and I approach 3,000 girls, then I'm a pussy and then I'm not really deserving of that. And that's, that's possible, that if you're stuck in that, life, in that mindset, that that's possible. You can't attract until you've done that. You might want to lim examine those limiting beliefs. You might want to really get into the, the deep structure of it or the deep feeling of it. What's behind that? What, 
What limiting belief tells you that you're not deserving of a girl in your life unless you've done 3,000 approaches? Part of you might buy into that. And if you're hanging out around p enough PUAs, you probably are attached to that mindset. But really look at what part of you thinks or feels that that's where you, what you need to do to yourselves. If, that's what, if you need to work through this, then by all means do it, but really look at, look at what inner feeling of unworthiness might be behind this, that you think you need to do this to yourself or resort to routines or trickery or tactics or NLP or whatever it is. I don't know if you want to get there. If you're interested in going through the process, then understand that that's what you're doing and then do the process by all means to me, that's like taking my head and running against a concrete wall. It's like banging my head. Remember the punk punks, like 30, 40 years of Sid Vicious, Sid and Nancy? It's like banging his head against the, against the wall until it's bleeding. It's like, mm, head banging. It's great. If that's what you like to do, that's a proof of your manliness. Wonderful. But again, look at what's behind the dysfunction of that. And it is. I have not seen too many PYs who aren't severely dysfunctional who aren't severely needy or unhappy. And my philosophy is, if you want to attract something on the outside, you got to. If you want better women, you got to become a better man. OK. There's a few things, secrets behind the secret that I was talking to you about. If we're assuming that you want results, that you want to get something in your life that feels good, or if you want women in your life, who you're going to feel good with, the only way there is to work on that inner state. Even if you think you're doing all this outer stuff, oh, I've been visualizing, oh, that's why it happened, or I've been doing 3,000 approaches, that's why it happened. Look at what's really happening on the inside that made you feel like, okay, now I've done my 3,000 approaches, okay, would the, the real girl please step up? There's a quicker way to get there. The secret, unfortunately, cut out just about every real secret there is. The secret, by the way, the term the secret was coined by Napoleon Hill in a book called Think and Grow Rich that was written in the 30s. So it's a little older than that stupid movie. By the way, he also, his editors cut out the real secret. He said the secret is on every page. But if you read through that book, you realize pretty quickly the secret ain't in that book either because they cut it out. They cut the word. They finally came out with an unedited version of Think and Grow Rich. And the word vibration was cut out 36 times out of that book. 36 times. The word vibration was too woo-woo for the public at that time. And it still is too woo-woo for most people. Because it sounds like woo-woo. But it isn't. It really works. Vibration, the law of vibration, <laughs> the law of attraction is the only real coherent, consistent law in the universe. Even things like gravity, you know, that atoms kind of stick together is a function of that law. Physics, quantum physics, is still derivative of that original law of attraction. Things attracted to each other by like frequency. And what they cut out of that movie was a bunch of stuff. They're saying, for instance, that guy is visualizing a car. So people think, oh, I have to sit there for, I don't know, X minutes a day, and I have to clear my mind, and then I see that car, and I drive that car down that mountain road. Well, that's great. And I have to really hear the engine. Submodalities, the NLP guys call it. And I have to really feel that's what that car, just Mazda, just feels right, was a commercial 20 years ago in the US. You know, kinesthetic. You have to get the sensor on experience of that. But what all these people, all that visualization doesn't attract the stuff. From the point of metaphysics, what attracts the stuff is the emotion behind it, the feeling. That's the engine, that's the afterburner, that's your turbocharged, you know, whatever, V8 behind it, your fuel cell. That's what makes it happen. The emotion makes it happen. So instead of just wasting time on all the oh, I have to get the images exactly right and I have to force myself. You're already so much in your head when you do that, you're missing the actual point. Not, of, not only of what you want, but also how to get it. So instead, 
what would that feeling be? If you want the Ferrari, there's perfectly nothing wrong with wanting the Ferrari or the 10,000 girls. The only point is, what would it feel like? Why do you want it and what would that feeling be? Like Alexander the Great cut right through the chase and goes straight after that emotion. Whatever it is that you want. I'm not judging what you want. If you want the Ferrari, absolutely. Like Tim Ferriss says, if you, on, your, on your shopping list, a wish list, don't ride world peace if you want a Ferrari. Right? You want a Ferrari. And that's perfectly fine. I'm not judging it. I wanted one and I got one. It wasn't the greatest car, but that's not the point. The point is I wanted a certain feeling. I was living in Vegas and I wanted to know what it felt like to drive down the street in my own red F430 Modena Spider. And I realized it didn't quite do what I thought it would do. But it's the feeling that attracts the thing in your life. Unless you can manifest the feeling on the inside, you can't manifest it on the outside. It's like setting your tuner to that frequency. That's the, one of the first secrets behind the secret. That's out, out in that thing. The feeling state is all important. Number two, you're getting out there, you're manifesting. You're really manifesting. I want the goddamn Ferrari. I want it so bad. Uh, listen to deep structure, what you just said. I want it so bad. I want these girls so bad. How about, no, I want them so good. It's like, how do you feel when you have that? Whenever you're sending out a wish, you're sending out two things. You're already sending, using, you can't not use your law of attraction. You're using it every day. Those might be what computer geeks call zero footprint women. They have, um, they're either non-existent or they're virtual or they're not real. But that's what you've been attracting. If, no, if you're trying to manifest a woman in your life and there isn't, that means you're coming from a feeling. The feeling of not having it is so strong that you're transmitting strong on that frequency on the one that you want. You're looking at what you don't have, and that's what you're going to get. You're going to get more of what you don't have and don't want. If you say, I want deep structure, if you're, if you're reading Bandler Grinder and all that kind of stuff, the deep structure is I don't have. And whenever you say, I want this, you are screaming to the universe with a big afterburner, turbocharged, massive nuclear reactor, I don't have. I want means, you know, it's like in the, in the Bible, the word want means lack. And if you're manifesting something that you really want and you're going to go out there and you do whatever it takes, you are screaming to the universe, I don't have and I'm going to have more of that. You may not believe me, but I, got, I swear to God that this is the God honest truth, that that's what you're doing. If you're ma trying to manifest women by whatever means and you don't have them, you have sent out a request for not having that woman. End of story. You may think I'm full of shit and you can tell me to my face, but I swear to God it's the truth. That's what it means. And if you're doing 3,000 approaches to get a girl, you are screaming to the universe, punish me, punish me, punish me. Bend over and spank me. And there's quicker ways to get that too, if that's what you're into. I'm not, I'm dominant, but if that's what you want, fine. So that's what you're sending out. Be very careful. The more emotion you raise, the more you get yourself into state, whenever you're manifesting, the more of that you're screaming out there because you're coming from lack mentality and that's what you're going to get more of. It's all in the secret, but they diluted it so much, they watered it down so much that that's completely lost. It's in there, but not in a way that you can use it. You're sending out this, every wish comes with, I want this, and it's opposite, I don't have. Look at where you're going. I've done car racing many years, about bonderance. I spent probably about $40,000 on training in the 80s. And I had a Ferrari then too, stupid ass car. Anyway, the point of this is, we're driving down on, on a place called Sears Point in Sonoma County, San Francisco. And there's like the last mile or so is lined with these red and white tires about 20 feet tall. And you're doing about 150, 160 down that last straight, depending on the car. I remember riding down there with Bob Bondra and he said, what are you looking at, dude? Where are you trying to go? And I said, I'm trying to go into turn 12 to go back to the pit stops. He said, then keep looking there. Because you're looking at the fucking red and white tires because they're so interesting. You're trying to avoid those. And you know what? Right now we're only going 150. We're going to go 175 pretty soon. 
you're going to end up in those freaking tires, okay? You keep looking at those tires, that's where you don't want to be. Why the fuck are you looking at it? And that's what you're doing. You're looking at what you don't have. And guess what? You're manifesting more of what you don't have. Unless you really get into the feeling of, look, I have. How do you get there? You need to be able to believe it. It needs to be within your vibrational range that you can actually have that girl or whatever it is that you're after. The other thing they cut out of the secret is Jerry and Esther Hicks emotional scale because that is determining your self sense of self-esteem, self-worth is all determining how you feel about yourself is what you think you can have and then that's what you're going to have. If you feel like I'm really kind of like a douchebag, but I want the perfect tenant, she has to be real sweet, you're going to attract more douchebagness. Because if you're a douchebag, that's all you can attract. If you, or even if you think that you're a douchebag, you attract douchebag girls. And the vibrational range that they're talking about, the emotional scale that they cut out of the movie, if your, vib if your vibration is the lowest possible, they have these 22 scales. It's arbitrary, but it's a good one. And if you're vibrating at the lowest possible frequency, which is powerlessness, depression, unworthiness, then, oh, the, the modern day Buddhists tell me, happiness is the way, just be happy. It sounds like, you know, Bobby McFerrin. But it's like trying to jump from one building to another. You can't, because it's outside your vibrational range. If you're truly depressed, you do not have access to total happiness and optimism. You have access to anger. It's about as close as it gets. And then people go up to the, the anger state, the rage, which feels a little better than powerlessness. And then psychologists tell you, no, 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 anger management. You shouldn't have those emotions. Because it's unpleasant for those around you when you're angry. And then they say, no, no, you shouldn't have that. Handle your emotions, meaning suppress your emotions. And then you go straight by, back down to depression. And that's what most people stay at that oscillation between depression and anger. Nobody said you should get stuck in that, but from anger, if you stay in anger for a few days, get pissed again, then uh, you can jump from that to frustration. You don't have access much higher up the scale. Go in baby steps. Yes, I'm happy. Yes, I'm rich. Yes, I'm lucky. Yes, I'm 10 feet tall. Yes, we can. It's a bunch of bullshit. Your, your unconscious doesn't believe that and will shoot you back down because it doesn't feel like you're deserving of it. Your inner critic will shoot you down. Go in baby steps. There's a concept in, in psychology or neurology called neuroplasticity. It's a fairly new thing. And what it means, they found out just in the last few years that if you keep slowly using baby steps, affirmations, you can really slowly retrain your brain and rewire it. It takes about 30 days, they say, I think it was Maxwell Waltz, to adopt a new habit. 30 days, 21 days. And if you want to change your brain, you got to do it slowly. But it will, after 30 days of staying with a better feeling emotion or kind of like working on yourself through baby affirmations and wouldn't it be nice if there's a better affirmation yes I can every girl no you can't why would you but wouldn't it be nice if I could have a better girl wouldn't it be nice baby affirmations will retrain your brain very slowly it's baby steps it's stuff don't jump from one tower of the world okay it's gone but okay don't jump from one high rise to another if you've never done this. You don't go in the gym and put like three of these big black plates on there. You don't go out there and do 400 pounds the first time you go to the gym. If I went in the gym right now, I could probably not, not put on more than one plate. You know, 135 pounds. That's probably all I can bench right now because I'm a skinny motherfucker right now. But if I do this for six months, then I can bench 100, you know, 225 pounds. It's a process. Don't use these giant affirmations that are completely unrealistic, completely silly, and completely unbelievable to you. Go and go into the feeling state. If you're totally depressed, work your way up to just a slightly better feeling thoughts. You have 60 to 90,000 thoughts a day, they say. 
It's a stream of thoughts. 90% of what you thought yesterday, and 90% are probably not in your favor. Wouldn't it be a better thing if you could start learning how to just slowly and easily, like Aikido, redirect that stream of thoughts? Every thought has an emotion tied to it. You can use what Jerry Astor Hicks called the emotion guidance system. What does the thought feel like? It's kind of like hot-cold, that old game. You're looking around the room, it's hot, no, it's cold. Oh, it's cold, no, no, it's hot, yeah, okay, you got it. Feel your way toward better feeling emotions and better feeling thoughts. Any thought that is bad or feels bad is bad. If a thought doesn't empower you, a thought doesn't give you energy, it takes energy. Or is at best neutral. And the only way you can feel if thoughts are good for you is by kind of like going kin kin kinesthetic, not kino, and feel like, is this thought really making me feel better? If it isn't, change it. Unlike, unless you like having that thought. There's no reason to think a thought twice unless you like having that thought. It's not what most people do. You keep thinking the same thoughts over and over again, even if they're not in your favor. Kind of gently feel, and this takes a little bit of practice. This takes a few days, weeks, months, whatever. Feel always toward better feeling thoughts. Baby affirmations. Whenever it is, con I talk constantly to myself very consciously at this point. I go down, you know, weird emotional paths too at times. And I can go, oh, God, I'm frustrated. Like when I, when I came from L.A., Marina del Rey, I lived like a half a mile away from Vince Kelvin. And if you've ever been to Marina del Rey, it's one of the most beautiful places on earth. And girls are playful. I can banter with them. I can have fun with them. I can do all kinds of, yes, cocky and funny, whatever. But I'm playing with them. And I went to Germany, Munich, Germany, which has some kind of hot girls. But they're snooty, they're cold. That's my limiting belief. And I'm not feeling good around them. And, I, and they, they're, they're flirt deficient. They can't do that. That's not in the nature of the German people. I mean, my dad was German, so I know. If you detect a, sl detect a slight German accent, that's why. Because I lived in Germany for a few years. And my God, I haven't lived in Germany for 35 years. I came came there and I was like, Jesus Christ, just get the pickle out of your ass, girl. What's up with you? What's up with it? No, we don't flat in this country. No. Oh, great. Okay. Well, it's a limiting belief too, but I don't want to feel that way. I have to constantly, if I'm in that, and I do a lot of workshops in that country, so I have to be there about six months out of the year, which is to me is hell because I'm used to sunshine and not this kind of weather. I'm used to fun, loving girls in L.A., and not cold-hearted bitches. Okay, for all the Germans out there, I apologize, but ain't my cup of tea, but I have to constantly, this is like an inner game challenge to me, like, oh, law of attraction, and it's like I'm, I'm going into these loops of self-affirming <laughs> negativity when I need to really work, and this is why it's on my mind, because I'm constantly having to talk to myself, no, they're not all like that. And I was like, doing this, I was walking like a week ago, I was walking, and I was like, like Friday a week ago, I was walking around and I was like, oh no, they're not all like that. And I was doing these baby affirmations for about two hours. I was doing strict inner game, like inner, like raising my emotional state. Like they're not all stupid bitches. They're all, there's some nice girls out there. I know, they're, they're going to show up in my life. I know that. The next morning, the phone rings and these two girls that I've met like six months ago call me up. Like, look, we're going to that lake. Do you want to come with us? Like we spent all night together. It was unbelievable. I was like, oh, there's some nice German girls. Jesus Christ. I mean, it's like, it was fun. And I was like, God, this was, that was easy. No, that was too easy. No, I can't. I was going through all these loops, too. It's like, no, that was coincidence. Nah, I had nothing to do with that. No, it's like immediately. If I'm thinking, oh, it has to be hard work, I have to kind of do marketing and I have to do a sales letter and I have to do all this kind of stuff to fill my workshops, then all of a sudden I'm like, nobody books these workshops. I'm like, okay, I'm off target here. I'm off feeling, I'm off center. Okay, what's wrong with this picture? Is this what I really want? No, it should be easy, it should be fun. It should be like the four hour work week by Tim Ferriss. Okay, center, go back. And what would I really want? What does it feel like? No, I wanna have my dream clients show up and book these workshops. 
Then I got pissed because my support guy wouldn't, wouldn't answer my emails for three days because he was busy doing the final exams in, in university or a week or whatever. And all of a sudden he, he puts all the bookings back in the Dropbox and it's like that workshop's full. I'm like, I thought I had two guys and there's like 12. I'm like, okay, it's the law of attraction. It's like, what did I want to feel like? I, I spent time, instead of doing marketing, I was spending time on, what would it feel like? Wouldn't it be nice if all of a sudden these workshops booked themselves? Meanwhile, I'm sitting here kind of like relaxing with these girls and here I am going back onto Dropbox. I don't know if you know what that is, but it's like a, a weird kind of internet thing. And it's like a full workshop and I did zero zilch to fill it. I'm like, okay, that was the best few hours. I mean, I felt like I was fucking off. I was spending time. I was wasting time with these girls when I should have been marketing and writing sales letters and doing all this kind of stuff. And the workshop filled itself. $15,000 worth of bookings in like one week. I'm like, okay, maybe there's something to this law of attraction. I think I'm going to talk to these guys about that, how that works. I don't know if you guys feel this. I don't know if you guys get this. Maybe you're telling me I'm full of shit. I just want to pick up lines and I want to know how I get past the last minute resistance. Well, the law of the universe. The universe is a little bit like a girl. You have to feel her and you have to know what it is and you have to trust it. Trust yourself and get better feeling thoughts about you, the universe. Wayne Dyer says, change the way you look at things and the things you look at change. And I say, change the way you feel about things. And the things you feel about change or will show up in your life. And if you, if you really, the universe is like a woman. You may think she's a cold hearted bitch because if you're not using her right, that's the God of the Old Testament. If you read the New Testament, I'm not a Christian, but I like kind of like what Jesus and all these guys are saying, Buddha. And basically it's a manual for using the law of attraction so it doesn't use you. You can't not use it. And if you're not using it in the context of meeting women or getting sexual fulfillment or emotional fulfillment, you, you're cheating yourself out of 99.9% .9 of what's possible. That's my basic message to you. And if you have any questions, this is the time to ask them. Yeah, uh, do you think uh, mixing Law of attraction with uh, taking right action? There's no way around action. It's not what I'm saying. Yeah. I'm not saying just sit there at home. That's like the secret, you know, they take your furniture away. That's not what I'm saying. I'm just saying action alone. You can't mix, not mix the law of attraction because it's the universal law. It's like, oh, I'm, I'm, today I'm not going to use the law of gravity. I shouldn't be using that today. It's going to use you unless you're up in outer space. And then it's still working in some weird ways. But because uh, planets circle around each other because of the law of attraction or the law of gravity. Action is possible, action is necessary, but any action that is not rooted in joy or in, in feeling good, however you're feeling, this is one of the many secrets behind the secret, however you're going to feel when you're manifesting something or when you're planning action, even when you're taking action, that's going to it's gonna be what the results will feel like. Like Florence Scovel Shin, who's probably the mother of all law, she coined the term law of attraction, uh, to the best of my knowledge, in the 20s. Florence Scovel Shin, one of the best books. Um, the Game of Life and How to Play It, games like the books like that, The Secret Door to Success, those are some of the best metaphysics books out there. And she's talking about any, my, your dreary desires are dreary fulfilled. Your impatient desires will be violently fulfilled. And it's going to feel like any action. Action is great. And you need to take some, if for no other reason, then you'll feel deserving of it. But hard work gets you results, not so much because of the actual hard work, but because, you, oh, I've done the work, now I've fulfilled my good old American Puritan work ethic, and now I, can, I feel so deserving now that it, and that's when it comes. That's the real reason it comes. The action, it doesn't it say like Matthew 10, 29. I sound like a goddamn Christian, but anyway, so like Matthew says like, uh, look, I forget, I'm paraphrasing. Look at the birds under the heavens. They sow not, they reap not, they don't fill their barns, and yet God feeds them or something like that. Uh, I'm, for all the Christians, they're sorry for my bad <coughs> paraphrasing here, but it says something like that in the New Testament, and that's really what it is. And 
you can literally attract the things if you feel deserving. One of the messages of, of, of Jesus was like, aren't you all little gods in training? Aren't you all like powerful magicians or angels or whatever? You, can, you shall all do what I did and more, he said. You can do all these things, but it's like you got to believe that you can. If you have the, the faith of the size of a mustard seed, you can move mountains, it says. Why are you fearful, ye of little faith? That has a lot to do with it. And the action that you take has to be rooted in that certainty or in that feeling, yes, that's possible. I may not be perfect, but I'm perfectly suited for the task, and that's how I manifest what I want. Does that answer your question at all? Yes. Thank you. Anyone else? Yeah. Uh, I got a bit confused because you were saying that um, images alone isn't enough. You should tap yes. into what you feel. Yeah. However, uh, in my experience with doing visualization, which mm -hmm. trained me a lot, by the way, but um, I were, was doing a lot of images, more like movie kind of like, mm -hmm. more like, well, more like the actually more like the Matrix program, like Neo is in the scene. <laughs> right, right, like right. That. And I consider those images, and actually they really changed the way I felt as well. So what right. You, so what are you talking about then with what the I'm images? Ah, okay. That's a good question because I was going to actually get into that. The images, the, you know, the visual part, the auditory part, the kinesthetic part, olfactory, whatever, yeah. serves to conjure up a state of where you can believe this. It's, it helps you believe it because it's so vivid. The mind can't imagine between real and imagined. Can't, can't differentiate between that. And it, if, if it gives you that, it's, it's primarily to clarify what you want. It's a, an essential part of, visual, I mean of, of manifesting, yes. But again, what does it feel like? Does it feel like, God, I'm a miserable pauper and I'm trying to be the you know, frogs into princes? Or am I really feeling it already? Yeah, okay. If that component is missing, then you're probably not using 90% of it. And it's going to help you. Visualization is going to, I mean, the whole point of visualization is primarily to raise that feeling state, to making it so real that, wow, you can actually get a glimpse, even emotionally, what that feels like. So yes, it's important. Visualization is great. But if it feels forced, oh, okay. don't force images. Because a lot of magicians, I mean, it's part of magical training. It's not like abracadabra. It's more like, OK, holding images, like a pencil, and making it float there for 10 minutes. That's magical training. That's how you do it. And without, and the first time you do this, it will start spinning and doing all crazy shit, and it'll change colors or whatever it is. Um, it's disciplining your mind. But if it feels like, oh, this is effort, and I'm forcing myself to hold this image of what I think, well, then the results will feel accordingly. So, so pre, 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 feel that feeling that you're really trying to manifest. And if it feels like, oh my God, this is hard work and I, I can't hold this image, it's drifting off to some other image, well, go there and see if, if you can't find a better feeling image. Okay. And then manifest that. Okay. Does that answer your question? Yeah, totally. Good. Uh, yeah. Just, just a one last thing, maybe not a question, more of, um, mm -hmm. of a comment. Okay. But if I understood you correctly, you're basically saying that it's not so much becoming, you know, the person that you want to be, but more about finding out what you're all about and right. just being true to yourself. That's the first step. You should always work on yourself and become a better. You're always perfect, including your desire to be a more perfect person, so to speak. I know this is kind of like a little mind fuck, but yeah, you should, you should work on becoming a better person and becoming who you want to be. But make sure that you really know what that is and that you're not doing somebody else's idea. If you think, oh, I should be, you know, whatever, the next uh, Michael Schumacher. I used to have those ambitions in, in driving and I didn't quite have the talent. And I was good, but not that good. And I tried to be that with force and it wasn't the right, the right thing. So and I, I realized there's things I'm better at and that feel better. You know. So, yeah, go for that. So it's more of, a, of an inward journey, you know? Yeah, I don't like to go too much into the inward thing because it sounds like woo-woo and it sounds like, oh, yeah, well, all you're doing is uh, sitting at home and going, oh, you know, that's not what I'm talking about. Go out there and do stuff, but just really make sure it makes you feel good. And if you realize, look, you're not, you're more of an introverted person. Like, my, my whole thing is more of, more of a mysterious kind of, you know, whatever, magician kind of guy. I'm not so much the animated, yes, la, 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 la. 
You know, that's, there's people who know that. And if that's not who you are, if I tried to be that, I'd fall flat on my face and people say, that's not who you are. Stop being the dancing monkey. Just really figure out what suits you and what makes you feel good. Fem. Wow. <laughs> and just really feel your way toward what's right for you, who you really are. And, and that's what I mean with, it's an inward journey in this sense, but you don't have to go inward and sit in a cave for nine months. Just kind of like you can do this in real time. As you, as, you, as you walk and as you're talking, you can feel, okay, is this feeling right or is this kind of like going off center here? You can do this in real time. Train yourself, what I call mind-body awareness, the Buddhist uh, emotional consciousness. The Buddhists call this mindful being. I would say they call it heartful being, call it soulful being. It's a physical. It's mind, body, and, and soul and spirit all together. And feel your way toward where you really want to be. Is this really who I am or is this like somebody's idea of who I want to be? Does that answer your question? Absolutely. Okay. Cool. All right, guys, I've done my time here, and um, I hope you got something out of this. But um, if you want to find me, how would somebody find you? It's very easy. You find me on www.magicmail.com, and that's spelled magic as an M A G I C K, as opposed to, you know, stage magic, M A L E. Male as in male as opposed to female. So it's magicmail.com. And there you can find some interesting stuff. Thank you. Thank you.